she came to, to deliver the shih tzu. I was about to pay her. She said that her husband um, was coming home from vacation. Prison? Yeah. Okay. And he wanted a, um, an English bulldog and I had puppies. I, I didn't know what she was going to take it then at that point. We, we was very cool, very close people. Were you? This is the plaintiff, Vernon Hill. He says the defendant agreed to buy an English bulldog from him. She owes him $5,000, refuses to pay, and here they are. <laughs> That's right, this woman has his dog, she hasn't paid him, and he's here seeking every penny of it today in this court. This is the defendant, Christos Clark. She says she and the plaintiff used to be friends before all of this dog drama, and they made a puppy trade. That's right, she gave him a puppy from her litter in exchange for one of his bulldogs. A month later, the guy comes to her house, sticks his prosthetic leg in her door so she couldn't close it and demands money from her, huh? Bottom line, she's square with the plaintiff and owes him nothing. She's accused of a dog gone dilemma. The defendant has bought a candle shoot for $2,500, the amount she's now owed for the puppy she gave the plaintiff. All parties, please use your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. See, come to order, please. But against have been to one more. Thank you, Douglas. Hello. All right, Mr. Hill. How you doing? You breed English bulldogs? Yes, ma'am. And you breed? Shih tzus. Shih tzus. OK. How do you two know each other? She used to work for, uh, rent some space inside my barbershop I own. OK. As a beautician. All right, so you find out her dog has had a litter, and you decide that you want to buy a shih tzu for your girlfriend. Yes. And how much was she charging for the Shih Tzu? $400. Is that accurate? No. No. How much were you charging for the Shih Tzu? I posted them for 1000 OK. And according to you, she was lowering the price for you, or? Uh, not according to me. I, I have no idea. I asked her how much she want for the dog. She said $400. OK. Now, do you go over there to pick up the Shih Tzu? No, she actually came to me. To deliver it? Yes. And then what happens? Um, she came to, to deliver the Shih Tzu. I was about to pay her. She said that her husband um, was coming home from vacation. Prison? Yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. And he wanted an um, a English bulldog, and I had puppies. I, I didn't know what she was going to take it then at that point. We, we was very cool, very close people. Were you? Yeah. OK. So I, I brought it down with me to the car. OK. And I showed her the dog, and then she said, you know, this would be a nice dog for him. Um, I said, all right, well, we can work something out. You know, I'm, I've been doing business with her. I said, we can work something so out. So what was the something you guys worked out? <laughs> it was, I was going to take $1,000 for the dog, which was going to be 400 from her dog, plus two installments of 300 I didn't expect her to pay me 300 that day, but she actually cashed at me $300 that day. Okay, and what else? And also for us to co-own it and for me to breed it and then split the litter in half. That's a very complicated... Agreement. Was any of that in writing? Actually, it wasn't. Okay. But Watch I this. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Was that the agreement? No. Oh. Not, not in full. No? And also... What the was puppy, the agreement in full? First of all, just to go back a little bit, we had a brother-sister relationship. He cuts my children's hair. He now does it out of his home due to him being a poor businessman and losing his shop, one of four, that he's okay, lost. Okay, I really don't care about that. Can you tell me what the deal was between you two? The deal was that I told him to, if he gave me the puppy, I would, he, at least he knew, would know the puppy would be in a good home, and then we could work on if she had babies in the future. We what don't want- we could work on if she had babies Those mean? were the words, verbatim. Yeah, but what did you mean? So if I decided to breed the puppy, that he would get a puppy. A that puppy. Was the, yes. That was and the then agreement. what how much were you gonna be paying for the English bulldog? He said that he needed he wanted a thousand dollars for the dog, and I said, I don't have a thousand dollars. I wanted a thousand dollars for my dog. Right. So he said, I need at least six. I said, I don't have six, I I have three, and he said, I'll take that. And then your understanding was that that was that. 
pretty much. And then his understanding was that you still owe him three. Right. And then he goes to your house, and what happens? Well, in between that time, he asked me twice out to go to dinner with him. Mm. I denied. Okay. Text messages, are, he should have them. Okay. Anyway, he texts me talking about um, can I when I, I need the other payment. Okay. And, and uh, so wait, I'd like to see the text between the two of you regarding the other payment. Do you have, you have them? Do you uh, have them? Oh uh, yeah. All right, let me see him. And do you have him? Yes. Show me text between the two of you before you go over there and stick apparently a prosthetic okay. leg in the door. Yes. What? Okay. Do I don't you have see a prosthetic? How that works. Yes. I don't see how you can stick a prosthetic leg. Do in you the have door. a prosthetic yes, leg? Okay. <laughs> He stuck Were you his sweet body on her? In my door. Did you ask her out? Were you sweet on her? No. Did you ask her out? Oh my God. No. That what is this? I asked if she wanted to get what something is this? to eat. There's highlight. That's the bully. Oh my goodness. I asked if she wanted to get something to eat because we. I was used to feeding her and her children. <laughs> you were. You You've used never to fed feeding me and her my children. And her children? Please. Yes. Please. Never. I don't think that looks like a request for a date. I read the first one. On October 25th, I see him saying, hey, sis, I hate to be annoying, but I really need that other payment. To which you do not respond, what are you talking about? There is no other payment. I don't owe you anything. To which you actually respond, OK, it would probably be next week, because I got to get all my bills out of the way this week. That's what you say. So you know mm -hmm. there's another payment. You show up at her place, and what happens? When I went to her place, um, I arrived there, and I asked, I said, well, listen, what's going on with the dog? She said, you know, she was going through some things and she made some business decisions and she don't have the money right now. I said, well, when are you going to have it? She said, honestly, I don't know. When I get it, you'll get it. I said, well, that ain't going to work for me. I said, if you can't pay for the dog, because now I'm thinking about the future, the, the breeding rights, the splitting the litter and everything that goes along with us. You know, all that stuff you should have had in writing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the text I gave you shows the agreement where she spoke about it shows splitting you the litter. That. Hold on. It spoke, in that text, she talks about splitting the litter, and she also talks about the $600 plus the $400 in that text that she wrote. And she agreed to split the litter. What did you mean when you said, regardless of you wanting to split the puppies? And how are you going to value what the value of a future litter is? How do you come up with $4,700? Because on average, one puppy is averaged at six, $7,000. I'm not going to just get your... <clears throat> use, I, I, I bought, I bought. And, and on average, how many puppies are we talking about? So every I, I single use, litter is 36000 You know, come on. Don't I be ridiculous. The smallest litter I've ever had was, I believe, six puppies. And you, so you made thirty six grand on that one? No, because sometimes you keep a puppy, a puppy may die. You may keep a puppy. So then how is it that you're figuring <clears throat> that the amount of future litters is going to net you $4,700? You know how because speculative, do you understand how speculative that is? If, if you look at the price of English Bulldogs, that's the price of a cheap one. The price of, a, the, price of the Merle English Bulldogs could range from fifteen dollars to $32,000. Why this are you saying that all, all you agreed to was for him to have one dog from that litter? I, we didn't specifically agree on a litter period. Well, yeah, I can see from your text that you okay. agreed on we doing something. We talked about her having puppies. Right, I, and what? Like, you know, that something was the agreement. What were, is your version of what the agreement is? There were numbers, like three or five. We didn't describe, we didn't specifically say a number. Well, you claim that it was that he'd get one puppy. That's what you said not six minutes ago you said that. Okay. Yes or no, did you say that? To him? No, to me in this courtroom. I did say it to you. All right, and then I'm reading a text where it says, blah, 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 regardless of splitting the puppies, mm -hmm. which is a different deal than the one you say. Okay. So we never agreed on a number of puppies or splitting puppies. The dogs are not full bred, so you can't put an amount on a puppy that's not even a full bred dog. They're not registered dogs. I have paperwork for my dogs. He has no paperwork for his. Do you not have paperwork for that Yes, dog? I do, ma'am. Did you give it to her? No, I didn't have time to. She, I, I gave paperwork her, I gave for her my dog. Puppy. She drove away that day, and we never finished doing anything. Jesus. I have no idea what this woman is talking about. Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. Who knows something about bulldogs here? Yes. You do? Yes. What do you know about bulldogs? Uh, bulldogs are, uh, the French bulldogs are the smaller. The English bulldogs are bigger. So are bulldogs generally, do they have health issues more so than other dogs? Yes, they do. The breathing issue. Breathing issue. Right, yeah. And they don't live as long as other dogs do. So it's tough, huh? Yeah, yes, it is. Interesting, but they're so cute. They oh, they're beautiful dogs. So beautiful. Going inside the courtroom. You um, are under the impression that you can come to court and get this complicated 
contract that you're telling me about with, with future litters and it's and have it assessed and have zero evidence of anything that you're saying. Just because you walk in here and claim every every puppy costs six grand, so I just put five grand in that lady's pocket by selling it to her for a thousand. You see how maybe that doesn't sound believable? You say she still owes you three hundred, and I believe she still owes you three hundred based on her text to you. So for sure she owes you three hundred. How else are we going to resolve your problem here? Ma'am. Oh, by the way, while you're thinking about that, you let that marinate in that head of yours right now. And let me ask you, how do you figure I'm going to make him pay you $2,500 for a shih tzu that you sold him for $400? The agreement was that I, I gave him the shih tzu for $400 due to the relationship that we had. And now that you don't, also, you're going to change the contract? So on what legal premise are you entitled to make a $400 purchase, the, a $2,900. The exchange was for a full-bred English bulldog. The dog that he gave me was not that. He gave me a says mix. Says who? What says the breeder? Who? Says who? The breeder that bred the dog. The father. The the father is American bulldog. Not English. Which is why the dog looks more like a pit bull than a bulldog. Man, this one does look like a. Yeah. You want, you want to return the dog? Or now you bonded? I, yeah, I do love her. Yeah. I don't know where she is. I have texts from Let me see today. the paperwork on the dog. I so think I, all I bought was the immunization. The ap actual application for the dog, for the licensing, has been sent out. You know what? You people all deserve each other. If this is how you do business, you just, here's a dog, take a dog. Eh, we'll see what happens later. Then that's what you're stuck with. OK, I on your counterclaim it. against him for because you want to change the terms of the agreement. Oh, and by the way, unless you're willing to return the dog and get your money back, which I don't think you are from what we just talked about, then no. And on your claim against her for future litters, no, it's too speculative. I have no idea what that would be worth or if it'd be worth anything. But I do know, based on your text, that you owe this man $300, $300 verdict for the plaintiff. Wait for it. I did. So you two are carrying on an argument here. What, what are you yeah. telling me? You can send your husband to see him? Yes. What for? Because he's an ugly person. He abused the friendship that I treated him very well. I've loaned him money several times. Yeah. I've saved him <laughs> several times. And, you know, I suffer for it, but it is what it is. Well, it didn't work out in court for you today. No, you got to give him 300 bucks. That's why. Okay. Mm -hmm. you, you just didn't have enough evidence to prove your case. You win some, you lose. I think it was a little unfair, but you win some, you lose some. Well, this one you lost. Yeah. Sorry about that. Thank you. All right. Good luck to you next time. Thank you. <laughs> All right. The plaintiff, Mr. Hill, is on his way out of the courtroom. Mr. Hill, you don't get $5,000, but you get 300 bucks. How about that? I'm disgusted. I spent more than $300 for a pizza for her kids when they were sleeping on my barbershop floor. You get what I'm saying? I sold her a good dog. I had a good deal, and she just decided to be disgusting about it. She's simply used to people just catering to her and doing what she wants. She thinks she's attractive. She have a million kids, but every father's different. And now it's time for her to be exposed. Now she stole a dog. Well, you, you know, you didn't have enough evidence to prove your case to the judge. You were friends. I gather was, that's it, over it, now. It, it, Is that was, right? It was evidence there. It was evidence that she agreed to the money, that she agreed to the contract. Uh, it didn't work for the judge. It didn't work for the judge. And, okay. and, that, and that just didn't happen. And, and sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Okay. Karma is different. Well, you got a little bit. All right, thank 300 you. 300 bucks. Thank you very day. much. Okay. All right, Harvey. So look, I mean, I, I, I don't want to like impose my views on everything, but I do want to say something. That if you're really in the market for a dog, you know, uh, purebreds are great but there ain't nothing like a rescue because they never forget that you saved them. And I am telling you, as long as they live, they will always remember. And that will do it for this case, litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. These are the plaintiffs, Emmanuel and Adrian Doe. Emmanuel says he purchased a clothes washer and a clothes dryer from the defendant. And when the appliances were delivered, they didn't work. They've been getting the runaround from this flim flam appliance man for months now and are suing him for a refund of the $600 they paid him. This is the defendant, Stephen Mustaro. He says he sold the plaintiff's used appliances from his shop. 
And when they were delivered, the delivery man forgot the lid trap filters, so he shipped them. He never heard from the plaintiffs again until he got sued in court. And now, here they are. He's accused of being a dirty businessman. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the dock of the plaintiff bought a washer and dryer from the defendant and it didn't work. But the defendant says all that was missing was a lint trap filter, but the plaintiff just disappeared. It's the case of the no spin zone. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, man. All right, so you folks were looking for appliances for your home, correct? Correct. Is there a physical store that you went to? Yes. Okay. And you pick out a washer, a dryer, and a freezer? Correct. And they were used, right? And refurbished, I guess, by you guys? Yes. That's what you do? All right. And who's the owner of the company? I am. All right. What's your name? Steven Mastero. Okay. Who are the other fellows? Just moral support, or are they the workers that were involved? They're moral, moral support. Okay. You guys can sit. You can support him morally, you know, as you're, as you're seated. You don't need to be standing up for all this. All right. Uh, you are wife, right? right. Yes. Okay. Because what happens is these things get delivered, and the person who delivers them does what? Um, the outlet was out. Um, so the delivery guy, he, when he tried to pluck it up, he said, the outlet is bad. You're going to have to get the outlet fixed first, and then call us. We'll come back. And but don't we? isn't it better to just get an extension cord and make sure that the thing is working, even if... Right? That's where I came. Right. That's where. <laughs> Rather than just let him go. All right, so he goes, and what happens? You do get the outlet fixed? Well, she wasn't home. So I said, all right, well, we'll get She that. wasn't home, so all chaos broke loose. Right, yeah. Right, yeah. right. So, so. I recognize that. <laughs> all right, go on. So she came home. Came home. She, did, did we get the washer and dryer ready to go? Can I do laundry now? I said, not, not yet. We got to fix the outlet first and then call. And then what do you say? I said, well, let's try the outlet on something else right. to make sure. Right. And so, what did we find out? Uh, the outlet was connected to a switch. We had just moved into the home, so we weren't aware like of all the switches. So I flipped the switch. And tried boom, it the yeah, outlet works. works. Right. <laughs> what so do you, I told what him, will you do like, without uh, her? How long have you two been together? <laughs> I don't know what to do without her. That's 12 right. years. We've been together 12 yeah. years. All right, so now, between the two of them, they couldn't figure out. Between your husband <laughs> right. and the delivery the person, they couldn't yeah. figure it out. All right, so now you flip the switch, and now the outlet's working, and then what? Well, we plugged in the washer. We plugged it in. It didn't come on. All right, so you tell Steve that, and right. Steve says what? He says, uh, I'll come down to look and, and get it fixed up and check it out. Okay, and then he does? No. All right, what happens? Oh, I'll be there the next day. He said, I'll be there the next day. He gave me a time, but he just never showed up the next day. Okay. Um, so I just kept texting him back and forth. I would just follow up, Steve. Very you... patiently, may I? Add. Right. Yeah. Right. So about a week trying to get Steve to come back and fix the washer and dryer, I couldn't get and Steve. And may I add, which means you have to go to the laundromat. Correct. How right. many kids you got? We have three. Oh my God. And how two many... under five. Two under five. One an infant. So okay. there's a lot of laundry. A lot of laundry. Right. right so I know who pays for the problem. Go ahead. <laughs> so I told my wife, well, I can't get him on the phone. So, you know, I'm just going to drive to the store and see if maybe he's at the store. The phone is down. I, I don't so know. So you drive to the store? Right. So I met Steve. I said, Steve, I've been trying to reach you on the phone. I mean, what's going on? And what's on? he say? He said, oh, well, the phone is working. It hasn't been ringing. I'm like, I've been calling you. you okay. Know. He said, I'll be down around four o'clock. And did he? Um, he got there about seven o'clock. Okay, was it him or so, or did he send? No, it, it was him. Okay, so he gets there and what happens? Um, he plugged up the washer. It didn't come on, so he had tools. He said he was going to try to fix it up. And did he? No, nah, he was he was at the house to about almost eleven o'clock. Oh my goodness! He didn't, yeah, it was he, late. He didn't fix it up, but he okay. He, yeah, so he said. All he was right, going. so time for a different washer. Right. So did he bring you a different washer? Yes, he did. All right. Now, the guy who delivers a different washer forgets an integral part of the washer. Right. The hose. And instead, what he did was bring what? A supply line? What did he yes. do? Yes. He brought, he brought a supply line. Instead of a? Drain hose. Okay. So you still can't do the laundry. Still can't do laundry. So you tell him that in an email, and you send him photos, and you tell him, I'm still in the same position. Right. Almost. How many weeks after you'd bought the thing? 
Almost a month. Almost I would a say. month. We're right. going towards the so end of October. You tell him, my mom and wife are there all day. Go ahead and go by. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm checking on the availability. Uh, sorry, I couldn't get a driver. The dog ate my homework. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. A lot of, you know, Manny, I have someone headed up there now, 5 5 30. Okay. And then what happens? I never showed up. You say, I'll ship it to you if I can't make it up today. He says, okay, that'll be great. Then the next day, so Steve, are you mailing the parts? Cause you didn't bring it to him that day. And you say, I'm coming out that way tomorrow. I'll drop it off. You can use a dryer, just not for long. Be out in the late morning. To which he responds the next day, are you still coming? Cause it's the late morning. Need to do the kids laundry tomorrow. I'm definitely coming up there today. I'll leave shortly. Okay, cool. No worries, it's as good as done, Manny. The next day, Manny, I didn't get out because final statistics are closed on Friday and I'll be but taking a bus up tonight. I'm not sure if I get there around <laughs> seven or eight. To which he doesn't say, get your crap out of my house, I'm going somewhere else. No, what's he say? Okay, okay. I will be home then. Please try to make it tonight. I'm trying to imagine you in this. I'm trying to, me? <laughs> He's John. No, he's got to be. Okay? And what are you doing during all this? Because I notice you're not dealing with it. How come? Uh, well, I'm probably doing laundry. I'm trying to figure yeah, out exactly. how many Exactly. She's busy <laughs> doing laundry. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how many outfits we have to last till the next, you know, when we Do you tomorrow. find that you have to engage often because your husband's a little too patient? <laughs> um, no. I was letting him handle it because he was the one that found him to buy the items from. That's the part so. I can't do. I just take over when it's all <laughs> getting messy. I just, 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 give me that, give me that. And I just take over, which is not a good I did way attempt to, to call him. He did give me his information. Yeah. Um, I never text him, but I was calling Maybe him. Maybe you're he just as responding. nice as your husband is. Good for you. <laughs> Please try to make it tonight. I have all intentions. Nothing will deter me. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Does he come? No. 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 The next day, Manny, I'll bring up the filter as soon as I get to the store today. Last night, I missed the last bus. Blah, 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 blah. To which he responds, okay, I'm home. <laughs> and then when he doesn't hear from you all day, when are you coming, Steve? My wife is paying the laundromat to wash the kids' clothes again. It rained. Really? Yeah. Because three days later, he writes you and he says, did you mail the hose and filter? I need the tracking information. And you know what your response is to him? I didn't respond. Oh, you responded. I did. Your response is, what hose? <laughs> Not to my recollection, Your Honor. What hose, Manny? Didn't he get the drain hose at Lowe's? And Manny in a storm that was a long time brewing, <laughs> finally takes a picture of his prior text to you, which includes pictures of the hose, the entire explanation of the hose, and says to you, you have got to be kidding me. I told you the day your guy left that the washer wasn't working, no hose, and he brought the wrong hose that didn't fit. Did you read my previous message? Look at my screenshot. I also sent pictures with no hose and the wrong hose, to which you respond, what did he do, buy a supply line and not a drain hose? I never saw this. I don't know how I missed it. I didn't even know. This is frustrating. You shouldn't treat people like this, Steve. I don't get it. Did he go buy a supply hose instead of a drain hose? I don't know, talk to him. <laughs> but whatever hose he bought didn't fit because we can't use the washer. On October 21st, I'll be up there early, Manny. But October 21st, he doesn't go. Nope. October 22nd, you say to him, what's your ETA? Can you believe this? Did you know he was gonna look this bad when you came with him for moral support? I'm, I'm, I'm ready to walk out. Yeah, you're looking at him saying, can you believe this? He would have never come had you known that. So I'll, what's your ETA? I'll message you when I leave with an ETA. Okay, and then the next day. So you're just playing games with me, okay. Finally. Your husband. Did you know about this? Did you read Those these? Those last few, I didn't know about Oh, them. I, I bet you them. did it. When did you find out about them? Here's now. a doozy. <laughs> I'm around your area. I can pick you up to go fix the washer so we can wash our clothes tonight. And I will take you back. How pathetic is that? That's so nice. Manny, sorry, I'm not around. <laughs> Bus has me at your place 8.30 or 10.30. And what's he say? Okay. <laughs> and then what's he do? Ghosts. Yep. We didn't talk to him ever again after that. <laughs>
Are you out of your mind? A little bit. Are you out of your mind? Just a little. Tell me, what's your defense? So is it worth it to buy a used washer dryer? I think not, because when people are getting rid of something, it's usually, it usually has a reason for it. I'd rather just buy things new. That's actually not bad. That's a pretty good point, right? What do you say? It might break down, and um, it doesn't last very long, so I don't think you Although you don't know, but it may and it may not. Right, and then if it didn't work, it would just end up spending more money over time instead of just buying a new one in the beginning. There you go, going inside the courtroom. What could possibly be your defense? Did you end up mailing him a hose and a lint thing? I believe so. Did he? No. no. We never got anything. <laughs> you never got anything. Oh, have you gotten that hooked up by someone else? No. Why we not? Had to go we didn't have any parts. We didn't know how it worked, so we went and just purchased another set that we knew. Oh, those okay. So you want the stuff it. out of your house? Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's okay, there. I got you. I got you. <laughs> now you also paid for. Oh, now you're tough, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, you try to work with people, you give them your money, and then it's like... Okay, talk to me about the freezer, because we don't say anything about Thank the you. freezer. Is the freezer working? The freezer worked. So then how worked. come you should get your whole 600 back, just for your troubles? Yeah. The 500 is for the washer and dryer, and then the additional 100 is for us having to go back to the To store, the laundromat over as well as Exactly, as well as having to do the laundry multiple times when yeah. we thought you know, the laundry it. was building. Yep. Yeah. We thought we would have yeah, a Yeah, your time is worth and something and all right. of this time you guys waiting. What about all the time that you guys are waiting for him and he doesn't show? Yeah, I buy it. <laughs> so you got yourself a freezer. Whether you meant to or not, what you did was breach the contract severely. And you cost them time and money. So even though they have a freezer, that's your bonus for your time and money that you spent. That covers your trips to the laundromat, the hours you had to stay there, the several times that you waited for him, the fact that you had to go out and buy new stuff because he breached. I'm ordering you to return the $600 and I'm ordering you to pick up the washer and dryer. I'm gonna give you exact, I'm not as patient as he is. I'm gonna give you three days to pick up the washer and dryer. If you don't wanna pick it up, you can put them out in the trash. Thank you. Does that Thank work? You. Yes. That's my verdict. Thank you, Your Honor. Be ashamed Thank of you, yourself, Judge. Steve. <laughs> so the plaintiff, are gonna get their money back. You know, this sounded like a comedy routine out there, yeah, but, but boy, it didn't make you look very good, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's really tragic, quite frankly. What do you I think? I hmm? It wasn't one of his best months. What, what, it what wasn't my you, best moment. Your moment? What are you about to month? Two months, it however long it went. It was, it was absurd and outlandish. The facts were twisted and I did the best I can. Oh, come on. You didn't do the best. Next time I'll do better. Oh, my God. He will do better. If he has I'll another be, time. All right, good enough. Up. Thank you very much, honey. Thanks. Didn't look good for you at all. And you folks, Mr. and Mrs. Doe, you are so patient. Golly, geez. You know? I try to be. You, you are nice. You are, you're just too nice. Too nice. Yeah, way yeah. too nice. Yeah, way too nice. Yeah. I think everybody feels so sorry for you. but uh, You know, I, I try to give them a lot of chances to make up. No kidding. But obviously you saw... <laughs> Well, look, I'm glad it's all over now, okay? Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you. Okay? Go get your laundry now. <laughs> okay. Harvey? You know, notice here that the defendant actually lost more than the actual value of the contract. So when you get sued or you sue somebody and they countersue you, you may end up paying more than the actual initial deal. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. This is the plaintiff, Aaron. He says he hired the defendant to rebuild the transmission and fix the door on his pickup truck, and he foolishly paid him up front for the work. Well, he waited and waited two months went by, and the unworthy guy never did the work and never even ordered the parts for crying out loud. He took his truck back, brought it to a trustworthy mechanic. Now the defendant won't return the $1,000 he paid him. That's why he's suing. This is the defendant, Charlie Jackson. He says he told the plaintiff the thousand bucks was just a down payment because the work would end up costing more. The plaintiff is full of so much drama that after he ordered the parts and started working on the truck, he couldn't handle them anymore and told him to come pick it up. The plaintiff didn't. He got charged all these storage fees, which he paid out of his pocket, and he owes this guy nothing. He's accused of mucking up a truck. All parties, 
Please use your right hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff hired the defendant to rebuild his transmission. The guy didn't do the job the and kept the money. The oh, but the defendant you. says, well, he says, not true. It's the case of we have liftoff, but no well, transmission. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Okay. You hired him to fix a car for you, correct? What was wrong with the car? Well, it started out, I had a truck that I was trying to get fixed, and I... Uh, you needed to rebuild and reinstall a transmission, correct? Yes, How did you find out about him? Through a friend. I had used him before. Okay. He, yes, now, does he have an actual shop, or is he doing this from his house, or is he doing this from someone else's lot? From a friend's house. Okay. So, you give him the truck, and how much is it supposed to cost you to fix it? Uh, it was $1,000 altogether. That's, that was supposed to be the total cost? Yes. All right. So, you give him $1,000 up front? Yes, because I, was, I had brought my arm, and I was in and out of the hospital, and I trusted him, so I gave him $1,000. Okay. Know, know, How'd that I work mean, out for you? Not very well. Right. So how long, how much time passes before you realize you're not getting your car back or, you know, and, you're, and it's not getting repaired? It was 6-9 when he gave me the receipt. June and 9th. <laughs> and then when do you say, I want my car back? It was August sometime. So from June to August, you had no, you didn't have the car? Yes, ma'am. All right. It's a GMC can, is that a truck? What is that? Yes, ma'am. What happened here? Well... I told him from the bat that $900 wasn't going to cover it because he wanted me to buy a door, put a door on, paint a door, buy an AC blower motor, rebuild a transmission. Just show me the contract you have with him. I got receipts where I bought car parts. and uh, No, but show me the contract where you agree upon the price of the repair. We didn't. Right. So now show me the receipt you have in your hands. There's one where I paid help. Just a second. This is a receipt you wrote up. Yes, for a help, for my helper, for the guy that I paid to do the transmission and the AC Right, but you motor. wrote it up. Yes. This is for what, this 375? For a mechanic's helper for, to have him pull the transmission and put the transmission back in, install the Do you the have an affidavit? Because you could just go to, a, you could buy, go to Walgreens, buy a receipt book and write this out. This isn't, it should be a receipt from him to you if you're paying him, not from you to him. This doesn't make sense. I mean, now, what is this my, piece of paper? This is supposedly state. from Jacksonville Auto Salvage, yes. but it's handwritten on yet another store type, you That's know, that you could receipt that you could get anywhere. That's how they do it. Too. Why did two months pass and the guy didn't get his car fixed? What happened? Well, because uh, I ran out of money on it because of the car parts and paying help and I had gas money going to get the parts. By that time, $900 is eat up because there's... Well, then I guess you're a poor planner because that's all you had gotten from him in advance. I presume if he's supposed to pay you more, he would pay you more once you fixed the car and, get, and gave it back to him. And you say $900. He says 1000 Does anybody have a receipt for the original amount? Do you have a receipt, sir? No, I don't even know what he's got right here either. I didn't yeah? Write no, I didn't write no receipt out for no $1,000. He gave me $900 to start with. Take a look at that. Does that look like your handwriting? Look familiar. Yeah, but nowhere does it say that that's all that it will cost. But it does say that he gave you $1,000, right? Yeah, yeah, well, the $100 is for the tire that he got Just, and stuff. Does it say 1000 or 900 like Yes, but he got some of the stuff that's on there. The transmission got so halfway pulled. two months later, why isn't the car fixed? You ran out of money. That's your answer. Well, I ran out of money, and I had a falling out with the guy that he had the car at that, I, that we was working on the car at mutually. Okay, and when he you say up, he, and had he ended up finishing stop. it. So if this guy couldn't afford to buy the parts, can he push the deadline so that it's not gonna be ready on time, but it'll eventually be ready? I don't think so, that's how you do business, right? Yeah. But he can't afford it. He literally can't afford it. What do you say? I mean, if he can't afford it, he can't afford it, you know what I mean? But is it a defense? No. Nah. Is it a defense? He says, I can't afford it, but I'll do it when I can. No. No? No. Just no? Yeah. No. Wow. This is a tough crowd, folks, going inside the courtroom. When you say he had the car at, whose choice was it where to drop off the car for you to work? Everybody's. What do you mean everybody's? Mine is, and his is and Willie B Wiggle Baker's your guy, not his guy. Well, it's his so guy, too. you had him deliver the car to the address that you pick, and then you had a falling out with that guy over what? Over him not doing the work. According to your testimony, you say that you had to pay him $2,000. Well, that's the landowner. You had to pay him that why? because storage fees. 
but I ain't even trying to get money out of it. I don't wipe well, that out. Well, of I don't course that. not, because that's that's a you problem. That's not a him problem. Well, I don't even but know I'm why trying to. Well, you talked about it a lot in your here. answer, so I was trying to understand what you were saying. I told him for a month and a half that that truck needed to be moved. The land storage fees come up, and I took the truck. To you his told house. him. I took the truck to his house because they were starting to talk about putting a mechanics lien on it. And I was like, no, you ain't. So I took did the truck to Did he deliver the truck back to you? Yes, me and Willie did. I'm sorry, can you, did he deliver the truck back to you? I believe okay. it was Where's Willie. the truck now? It's at my house. And is it drivable? Yes, ma'am, because I had to have someone else put it, a uh, transmission in it. Okay, what did it cost work. you to get the transmission in? I got another one, $600, and I put it back in. Right, who put it back in? A friend from church. Oh, so they didn't charge you? No, ma'am. I got you. All right, so my question to you is, what do you think he got for his grand with you other than no car, no truck for two months? What did he get? A driver's side door, a blower motor, and the transmission halfway pulled out. Okay, so did you get a door? Yes, ma'am, I can show you right here. Let me see. You say nowhere here does it say that it'll only be $1,000. But it does somewhere here say that. It says 350 for labor, 500 rebuild transmission, 100 for fluids, and then it, that is tallied up to be the 950, and then underneath that you write $35 tire. This is all the same handwriting that's here. What about the uh, door and the AC blower? Well, I don't know. That's, that's the kind of thing you should be putting somewhere. <laughs> I mean, I didn't tell you what to write. Was there a separate agreement on the door? No. I'll because you. this is what's here. It doesn't say door. That was, I mean. It was always I, I, part of it? Was, was it always to... part of it? Yes. There's a door. It's not, it won't shut. I got slamming to get it shut just to get to work. It's, and what's it got it, etched, scratched on it? It's painted a different color, and it's got some something from a junkyard, uh, a number on it. It come from a junkyard. Yeah. So, yeah, I got Show the door. Show me proof of what you paid for that, because I don't think you paid. $300? That's how much they go no, for. No, I'm. This is a kind of a suspect thing to give me. I, you know, I, 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 I'm. Well, that's how the junkyard done it. I'm sorry. I mean, like, if I had a yeah. printed receipt, I would give it to you. But what's the phone number for this salvage place? I don't know. Where is it? In Jacksonville, Arkansas. Where? To the left side of the interstate, about a mile and a half off of it. Did you change the door? No, oh, ma'am. So you're getting use of the door. I have to slam it. Yes, and the blower motor is laying in my floor. I don't have heat. Oh, what's the blower? It's AC va fan. It's in the truck. It was there for the mechanic guy to put it in, but he never got to that before we had issues. But you have a blower? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm going to order you to pay back part of the money because he does have a door and a blower that he admits to getting from you. But he also has all these months of absolutely nothing other than the door and the blower being purchased, which is and the door, inconceivable. Sorry, ma'am, but in the door being put on, installed, and yeah, the, I know. You know what? And the transmission being halfway. And done. you keeping it for two months? And there being a threatened lien on it? And it, the transmission being part of the way done in two months? I mean, what, you don't you don't think there's any detriment to you on that? You okay. think you should get exactly what? No, there. You know, I there's a give and take. Stop talking. Me. There's a give and take here by virtue of the fact that you have imposed upon him the fact that you either bid off more than you can chew, don't give a real contract with a quote, or do and are now you know trying to backtrack on it. No, there's all kind, you know, your evidence is so flimsy. Um, you know, it's just, it's no, no. I'm gonna order you to pay back $750 to the plaintiff, verdict for the plaintiff. So the plaintiff prevails. Mr. Jackson, the defendant's just come out of the court. You got to get me back $750. Yeah, it's kind of a joke, but it'll be all right. It's all of a sudden done now, so I'm okay with it. What did you do to the car? Anything? You got had other people do the transmission. Did, yes, you we, didn't put the blower motor in. There's the transmission was halfway pulled. Uh, you said that door was put on. Mechanics times fifty dollars an hour. Nine hundred dollars right. don't last long. You okay. Know what I mean? Well, you got to give him back seven fifty. Okay. Yeah. Good enough. Thank you. It took them too much time. That's what the judge thinks. Yeah, but I really started telling him to get the truck in like well, 15 to 20 yeah. days. So it's Thank you very uncle. much. That's it. Okay. So, Aaron, how are you feeling now? I would have got the thousand dollars, but well, you got 750. That's almost I there. Take what I can get. But usually, when you sell a truck, it comes with a door and a blower. Yeah, I would agree with that. So 
<laughs> the blower's still on the floor. The car, huh? Yes, sir. You got to get. I'm gonna have to put it in, but yeah, that's yeah. fine. I mean, usually and it's winter. You got no heat when you buy a truck. I get you. It I comes with you. it. All right. Well, it's your fault. You didn't get one with that's the blower right. hooked up. That's right. Okay, Harvey. Okay, Doug. So let's talk for a minute. So, you know, there is a difference between doing the humane thing, the just thing, and the legal thing. That there are situations where, you know, somebody is in the hospital laid up, somebody doesn't have the money to perform under a contract, somebody is emotionally upset because they're getting divorced. None of those are defenses to a breach of contract case. You have to perform under the contract, and it may be humane to give somebody a break. Legally, you don't have to.